Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I've got an ASRock B560M-C on the desk. The owner said it doesn't pull on, so let's see what's going on here. We will start by measuring resistances on main power lines. If the socket is at the bottom of the board, here's what we measure. 3.3 volts, we measure on the first pin on the top row. We have kilo ohms here. The pin number 4 is 5 volt and it's also 700 ohms. The, my, the 12 volts is the last two on the top row of kilo ohms as well. The minus 12 volts, I also check this. This is the second pin at the bottom. Okay, it's now short here. And the CPU power is in mega ohms, means there's no short. The first power on is gonna be without CPU, just in case. I wanna make sure that there's no obvious shorts. If the current draw stays low around 50 or 100 milliamps without CPU, then it should be safe to put the CPU in memory and try to power on again. On. So I press the power button. Let's see the current. And we have way too much. Oh wow, it's almost 400. And did you see there's a small smoke over here? Hmm, this is interesting. Okay, so the current draw is abnormal. It is uh, way more than it should be. I suppose we have shortened components somewhere. I guess we can try using our thermal camera to see if anything hits up on the board. It does not guarantee we will find the issue right away, but can point us to the problematic area at least. Okay, see it here? It's somewhere, somewhere here. Again, and yes, we have. Oh, whoa. Okay, let's look at the microscope into this area. Wow, look at that. Um, See this little dot on the top of the diode? That usually means it's blown. Sometimes MOSFETs show the same kind of mark when they fail. Um, let me see if we have a schematic with this board. This is diode because it marked with D here. I was unable to find any board view or schematic with this board and I gave it a try to find the component by its marking on the package. When schematics aren't available, identifying components but their topside marking is a common repair technique. A quick online search can often confirm the part number. In this case, the code points to a BAT54C Schottky diode, typically used for ESD, line protection and USB circuits. So, this is the schematic of our diode. This is the common cathode diode. The spin is common cathode in those two anodes. So we have a characteristics is 200 milliamps and 30 volts. If it really is just an ASD protection diode, the motherboard should still work without it. But keep in mind, without that diode, the USB lines won't have protection anymore. So a voltage spike could damage the PCH or even the CPU. Removing the diode from the board, I was still worried that something else might be shorted. The diode was blown, and when that happens, it can either short its pins together or completely disconnect them. But in this case, none of the diode's pins were connected to ground. That means the low resistance I measured on the cathode wasn't from the diode itself. It's actually caused by another shorted component somewhere else on the board. To confirm, I checked the resistance on all the USB and HDMI port lines and none of them showed a short. So, we have a short here. 
and no, it's still shorted. Okay, let's remove those capacitors as well. Removing those cups was my final check in this area. Sometimes an SMD capacitor can be so badly shorted that it doesn't even appear as the hottest spot anymore. Instead, the traces carrying the short from the power source can heat up the most. Let's measure the resistance now. And still have a short. So those capacitors are good. No short. No short. No short. Okay, let's put them back on. Let's inject two volts into that area to see what's going to happen. Okay, we have five watts. Now let's take the thermal camera. Injecting. So I see the trace light up. Okay, let's remove the heat sinks and try to see maybe something out of the heat sinks. I have removed all the heat sinks, and the most interesting part right now is the chipset. It's important to inspect the crystal for any visible damage and also measure the resistances on the chipset. Since I already have the thermal camera set up, I decided to check the PCH during voltage injection and the result was a bit disappointing. Okay, I guess we have something on the PCH. Just light up. So let's measure the resistances on the chipset. Go. That's the shortest. Let's do the IPA test. Definitely see now that's this on this part of the crystal. So, um, using the thermal camera, I discovered that the PCH has a short. The hottest spot is at the corner near the crystal, and the capacitors on the top side are also shorted. This confirms that the PCH itself is dead. Replacing it wouldn't be practical, so this motherboard will go to the donor board rack. This repair attempt wasn't successful, and I want to show that not every motherboard can be repaired or is worth repairing. This is exactly such a case. Still, every repair is valuable experience, even the unsuccessful ones. 
If you enjoyed following along, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with others who love electronics repair. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.